Welcome to Basic Brewing Video. I'm James Spencer. I'm Steve Wilkes. It's another experiment time. Comparison. We, we love experiments. We do. Uh, this is a fermentation temperature experiment, mm -hmm. and it is based on Imperial Organic Yeast's seasonal release uh, A43 Loki. Loki. So, okay, what, what, old purveyor of yeast? What, <laughs> what can you tell me about Loki? Uh, he's a trickster. It's a, <laughs> it's a Norwegian god. Of, uh, it's a, uh, it's my understanding that it's a, a Norwegian strain, or I should say, maybe Baltic might be a better, because I've heard of it from Lithuania. Not Loki itself, but the, the general strain, kind of a farmhouse mm. strain of yeast, that it has a wide temperature range, mm. so that it, is said to ferment very well and cleanly at low temperature and then also very kind of phenolic -y and peppery and spicy and all that at higher temperatures. So farmhouse ales down to lagers, I, I would think. And that's kind of what we're doing here today. You've, yeah. you've brewed two beers, one at 68 degrees fermentation temperature and another mm -hmm. at 90 degrees. Mm -hmm. Left on your porch for a couple of days. <laughs> sealed, sealed in a man. <laughs> sealed in a mayonnaise jar yeah. <laughs> on Funk and Wagnall's porch. <laughs> and uh, so we're going to compare and contrast. But <laughs> it's a, you know, I, I sell this strain of yeast and it's quite popular. I mean, I haven't sold a million of them, but... People in the know mm -hmm. are coming in and giving it a try, and, and I've had a couple of beers brought back to me that they've made with it, and they've been very pleasant, very nice beers. So it's it's a it's a fun yeast and one that's fun to play with, and so shall we at this moment. Yeah. Now, I, I decided to do a 10-gallon batch, and I very rarely brew that much beer at once because I'm just I'm brewing all the time with all these experiments and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So that's a lot of beer for me to have at the house, <laughs> being the sole beer drinker in the house. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's why I'm moving towards the moo moo. <laughs> but so so uh, what I wanted to do is since I brew brew in a bag, uh, you know, twenty gallons of grain is a lot, especially when after you get it wet and then try right. to lift it out by yourself. And so I was saying to Steve at Steve's Brew Shop dot com that. Uh, should I just do this as an extract beer? And Steve said, why don't you do it as a partial mash? Yeah. So that's what I did. Yeah. So here we go. Buckle right. your seat belts. Here we go. Buckle. <laughs> oh, buckle. Buckle up. <laughs> I started out uh, with uh, eight gallons of water at 150 degrees Fahrenheit or, or 30 liters at 65 C in the high gravity uh, brewing system, electric brewing system. 10 pounds or four and a half kilograms of German Pilsner. And I mashed for one hour. And then after I did the mash for one hour, uh, at 150 degrees Fahrenheit or 65 C, I, I added six pounds or 2.7 kilograms of Pilsen light dry extract. So is a hybrid, you know, a, a partial mash. So after I added in the extract, uh, I also added in five more gallons of water to bring it up to you know, the, the pre-boil volume that I wanted. So, uh, I, uh, at that point, I brought it up to the boil. I added two ounces or 56 grams of UK Fuggle at 5% alpha acid and boiled for 60 minutes. So this isn't a real hoppy beer. This is not about the hops. This is about the yeast, essentially. And that's it. Essentially, I, I, I chilled down uh, initially to 90 degrees Fahrenheit uh, or 32C, I believe. And so I, at that point, I pulled off, I stirred as I pulled off the, the wort to keep everything the same. Pulled off half of it, chilled again down to uh, 68 degrees uh, Fahrenheit, and then collected the rest of the wort. And I pitched into each half a package of a, uh, Imperial A43 Loki, original gravity 1048, final gravity 1010, ABV 5%. But uh, here's the tricky part. I put half of it in the basement uh, at 68 degrees Fahrenheit. The other half I put in my electric uh, brew in a bag system from high gravity using a water bath to mm -hmm. keep the, you know, the big old glass carboy uh, happy at 90 degrees Fahrenheit. I kept that uh, in there for three days and uh, 
<laughs> the first night, I mean, it didn't take any time at all for the, for the airlock to start, start bubbling on that one. At about midnight on the first night, I came down and I could tell it was just about to be happy enough to come out. So I put some firm cap S in there yeah. uh, in the 90 degree one. And then the, the next day, uh, the one in the basement caught up and I also put some firm cap S in, in that one as well. So, uh, yeah, three days at 90 degrees Fahrenheit and it just, just kept the, um, the one in the basement until it was time to bottle. So there we go. Uh, we have the 68 degree one mm -hmm. and the 90 degree one. Mm -hmm. And we're, uh, we've recorded uh, audio for the uh, Basic Brewing ra uh, Radio podcast, or the audio side. They look the same. Well, I was going to say they do, although this, the one at 68 seems to be a little clearer to me. Now, that could be the glass. It could be... <laughs> I'm mesmerized. It could be... Uh, so, this one just seems to be... I don't know. It seems a little more opaque. Ever so slightly. Yeah, it definitely is. It's interesting. Now, they have a different, a different aroma, a different nose to me. Mm, I do. What do, um, what do you perceive? And then I'll say exactly what you say. Well, <laughs> I think that the one brewed at 68 has a little bit uh, more pronounced bouquet. They both smell bready mm -hmm. to me, kind of doughy, wheat, bready kind of smells. Um, I think I like the 68 degree bouquet better. Only because there's a little bit more of it, and it's pleasant. Mm. I went ahead and skipped toward, toward the tasting. The 68 is, as you said, bready. Yeah. It's got mm. kind of a dark, I want to describe it as almost a dark funk to it. It's got kind of a... Yeah, it does. Like an earthy character a little bit. Not like tasting like dirt, but, <clears throat> but earthy meaning it's kind of got a darker, dark bread. Yeah. Flavor to it a little bit. Maybe, I don't know, maybe like whole wheat instead of white bread. Yeah. I go so with that. So not a, not a giant difference, I but go with that. some difference. But it shows off the malt character yeah. for sure. The 91. Hmm. To me is brighter. Mm hmm It's not sour. Mm-mm. But it is. It, it has. It has a brighter characteristic. Um, it's kind of more clean in that it's not as kind of funky as the sixty-eight. I wouldn't say it's a teeny bit more fruity. I think it's a little bit more fruity. I think it doesn't have quite the uh, mouthfeel. It doesn't. It's not quite as um, viscous. Mm. And. I am splitting hairs here. We're not talking about a real thick beer and a real thin beer. But but the 68 one has just a tiny bit more mouthfeel to me. They finished out, according to the hydrometer, they finished out the same. Yeah, so that's... But the perception. Yeah. And um, so it's kind of, the, I mean, I we've already done an audio show about this, uh, a little audio tasting, and I'm getting the exact same result mm -hmm. from, you know, a couple hours ago. And on the audio show, we split. You like mm -hmm. the cooler one better. Yeah, 68. And I like the warmer one better. I think we agreed on the perceptions that we <clears throat> are getting from the beers in that, you know, this one tastes more bready, this one tastes brighter. It's just that you have a, you, you like this one better. You like the, the 68 degree one better and I like the 90 one better. It's just a, a matter of preference. Mm -hmm. And I think I still feel that way. Mm. This one is, both are both really good, but this one is just a little bit thinner to me and I want it to have a little bit more body. So maybe the only thing that would make this beer different from this beer would be a tiny bit of carapils. Oh. And I'd be like, okay, it's the same beer. I mean, you know, like that would be the difference if I was, if someone handed this, this to me and said, I wish it had a little bit more, I'd say a little, little carapils and you're, and you're there. 
But uh, they're both really tasty beers. And I think they both show off that yeast very well. Mm -hmm. And I think, yeah, if, the, if this was brewed with, uh, say, you know, a California ale yeast, it wouldn't be nearly as interesting as, no, it wouldn't. as what this is. Yeah, the, I think the yeast really brings a lot to the party. So sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, I'm tempted to say, well, I don't want to say yeast doesn't matter. I, don't, I would never say that. But you're going to get a good beer. Right. Kind of no matter what you do, as long as you follow a few basic rules. But but yeast really is kind of where the magic happens. Mm -hmm. And I think this yeast really shows that, demonstrates that very well. I, I just wonder also if, if, if I had had a lot, you know, more hops in, say, the 91, mm -hmm. whether, whether that would have, you know, put a magnifying glass up to those, you know, bright hop characters as well. Because this, you know, mm. you know... If two ounces of fuggle, at, you know, in ten gallons is is yeah. is just going to be enough to balance the malt. It's not. It's yeah. and especially at sixty minutes, you know, the hop character is not going to be there at all. Mm -mm. <laughs> this was just about testing the yeast. Mm -hmm. So it'd be fun to you know test some different recipes. That, uh, well, it would. You know, um, gosh, I I'm pretty impressed with this yeast. It's it, you know it doesn't. It's not funky like a. A Belgian, a big Belgian yeast was going to bring all that heavy uh, spiciness to it. Mm -hmm. It's not as clean as a California ale yeast or their, or their cousins, or even you know a, a British ale yeast. It's it's not as clean as that. It's fruitier. It's a little bit spicy. It's a little bit. It's a little bit of everything, mm -hmm. kind of. Well, you can t <laughs> you can tell which one I like better. Yeah. <laughs> You're 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 a more fair man than I. I'm an equal opportunity lush. <laughs> so uh, so thanks. To, we have to say I have to say I guess that that Imperial Organic Yeast is a sponsor of the audio podcast on occasion and mm -hmm. uh, also uh, gave uh, the, donated the yeast for the experiment. So we have to say thank you to them. They're good folks. Uh, Got to love uh, Imperial Yeast. I'm really impressed with them. Uh, but uh, what a fun thing. Yeah. I can't wait to can't wait to see what the next seasonal thing is. <laughs> so, anyway, there you go. Happy brewing, everybody. Uh, play with your food. Play with your beer. Play with your yeast. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Come and visit us online at basicbrewing.com. You can find archive lists of our audio and video podcasts on home brewing. You can also find our DVDs and our brewer's logbook, where you can track and log up to fifty batches of beer. If you're in Fayetteville, Arkansas, stop by Steve's Brew Shop or find him online at stevesbrewshop.com. We're turning to Leon Redbone <laughs> about this time. I want to be the dudes <laughs> on the cakewalk in the town. Shalom, shalom, harvest moon, I burn the sky.